But brother, that's the thing. You have to go through the rather long-winded way to fully appreciate what the hell's going on inside. This is just to show us how to do it on the calculator. No, 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 no. This is only so you understand what's coming out of the calculator. That's the only the only thing I care about is that when the number comes out, you know what it means. I don't I'm not gonna test you on doing this. You've done it once, you've suffered enough, you suffered for 25 minutes doing this. You'll never suffer through this again. But the important thing is knowing how this definition ties to this calculation. When you take the square root of that sample variance. Now, algebraically, what does that know? B. I know, you guys are good, you're so good, little math, math 95, plus or minus S, right? Just call it S in this class. We only use the, we only, I know the margin of error has a plus or minus, but the number itself is all we really care about. We're just gonna go ahead and be bad mathematicians and call it S. That number is the sample standard deviation. Why don't you want to break the plus or minus? Say that again. Why don't you want to break the plus or minus? You can, there's nothing wrong with it. Nobody does. Nobody, nobody does the plus or minus. They do a plus or minus on a margin of error, which is not the actual sample standard deviation, it's a component of it. So by practice, we just call it the, po the positive part. You can put plus or minus, I don't care. Just, you won't see that in journals, that's all. I'm trying to train you guys what you're actually gonna see in your, in your careers. Yeah, you gonna learn about the margin of error? Oh God, yeah, you already have, we're gonna continue. We have to, oh, we have to, we have to keep coming back to that because that's kind of the point of this, is applying this inferentially. Right now, right now, remember the difference between inferential statistics and descriptive statistics from the first week of class. You may have forgotten already, that's okay. I'll give you, give you the examples we used. The example I used for descriptive statistics was, here's the 2012 election, or yeah, 2012 presidential election, the big map with the blue and the red, right, the blue and then the, and the crazy shapes. The inferential statistics was caffeine addicts get no rush from their caffeine. Okay. What was the difference between the descriptive and the inference? Do you remember? Um, well, it's okay if you don't. You can write your notes. It's okay if you don't have the tip of your tongue. I'm just referring to it right now because it ties the margin of error. Wasn't that inference related to um, qualitative? qualitative? They can all, believe it or not, they can all relate to that. All of them can tie back to the types of data. What are you trying to do with an inferential stat study? What are you trying to do? <laughs> Come here. Andrea. Andrea, go. Does that have to do with like causation and correlation? In? Like the coffee thing? Where? Um, that, like, the coffee study was... Uh -huh. Did they ask every single caffeine addict? No. No. They asked, I think it was 150 of them or something. Yeah. They drew a sample <laughs> and then made a conclusion about the... The, the, population. the population. The population based on the sample. That's what makes it inferential. When you draw a small sample and then apply that to a population, that's what makes it inference. If you stop at the sample, it's just descriptive. Or if you stop at an entire population survey, which you usually don't get to do. So if you just, like, if we're just done here, if we're talking about, so did you guys do the square root of this for me? What is the square root of that bad boy? Uh-huh. S for Ernie is 1.58 points. Not point squared, points, yeah? Because now we took the square root, boom, points. So on average, on average, Ernie deviates about 1.6 points from average. There's nothing inferential about that. That's based on the five tests we have. Based on his sample of five tests, he deviates about 1.6 points. You see how it's kind of close to your 1.2 from before? They're gonna be fairly close. But that's the difference. So back to your question about margin of error, Davidson, and who else asked me about margin, two of you asked me about margin of error right now. It was a great question. We would then, if we wanted somehow to have Ernie apply to a population of, I don't know, Muppets test scores, we'd have to convert it to a margin of error, which I don't want to do in this class per se. We'll do the conversion in 244, the interpretation in 243. You've already started doing that in your Gallup poll. Go ahead, Corey. I missed the statement right after you wrote 1.5. Good. Let's have you say it again, not you personally, the class say it again. Hold tight on that for like two minutes. I promise. We're not done saying this today or tomorrow or the next day. Karen, go. It's a different animal. It, logically, if it does in your mind, that's fine, but it has a different mathematical place. And, and again, I, it, it gets, there's only a couple things in an in intro stat class that drive me nuts when we can't do it in class. And the derivation of why that is n minus one, I would love to, I would love to do it with you, let them draw you through it. 
I've tried in the past, it backfires horribly. It's just one of those things. It's one of those things where I tell you in class, trust me, I've got the proof online if you want to see it. I've got it drawn out for you in a couple page document. If you want to see why, I, I encourage you to go look for it. It's just when I try to do it in class, I was just like, oh God, I hated it enough before I walked in here. And it's one of those things I've learned over 20 years of doing this. I leave that, I leave that off to the side. Isn't it sort of like an error rate almost? Like it really no, that's, <laughs> yes, that is what variation is measuring. An error rate is a great way of looking at it. Error rate's more inferential than descriptively, but yeah. It could be this or you could yes, be that. Yes, yes. But whatever, whether we're talking about a population or a sample in this case, Corey's question. I said something with this 1.58 points. When I said S equals 1.58, when I said S equals 1.58 up there, all I did, you saw what I did right there, the square root of 2.5 to get that 1.58. And I said something, 1.58 points, but I said more than that, didn't I? It was like on average, mm. how much he deviates from the average. Can you say that a little bit louder, Alicia, because it was perfect. On average, that's how many points he deviates from the average. If you don't mind saying it one more time, even louder, because it was perfect again. On average, <laughs> he deviates 1.58 points from the average. Thank you for all three of those. That is the key. And do you see how that? T yes, I think you're right. Applause is in order. Yes, I think so. It's all flat. Yes. We move away. Yes, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Did you see how Alicia tied it right back to that different? Mm -hmm. It's the average distance of the data points from the average. Mm -hmm. So on average, his tests are about 1.6 points away from 81. That's what the standard deviation is. Aaron, you said, my God, it's a roundabout way of getting there. It is. That's why you'll never do this calculation again. I don't want, you did it once. You survived. Yay. This is the craziest bar you have to jump over in Matthew 43, is that calculation. And the, my, my least favorite part of it is, Corey, you point out right there, that's my least favorite part, is trying to justify why it's n minus 1 and not n. But I don't want to get hyper-focused on that. I want to get hyper-focused on what that number means when it drops out of the calculation. W, go ahead. Is that what you're going to say? No, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Yeah, how is this going to help us? I mean, is it Merle? Consistency, exactly. Dispersion exactly. If I focus on the calculation, I am, I am teaching you Math 20 or Math 65. If I focus on what it means, we're talking about Math 243. Please, Alicia, go. Well, because when we do the one for Bernie or whoever Bert. we're doing, yeah, it'll be, it should be higher. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say that again one more time. I want to do it three times this time. Bert, Bert should be higher. He should higher. higher deviation because he's more deviant. Average. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not by. <laughs> His scores are more deviant than, oh, forget it, yes, yes. Do, do we have a gut feeling that Bert's measure of standard deviation should be higher than Ernie's? Yeah. Good, 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 yes. And you can see that if this calculation will be the same for Bert, this will be the same because he had five test scores. That's going to be larger, as you've already, you've already told me that, right, from down here. You told me before this should be larger. I think, Jason, you pointed out to me earlier. I think, I'm going to give you credit for it even if you didn't. Well, I call Jason Jason. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Look at him, watching you both at the same time. Let's not focus on the arithmetic then. Grab your machines. Let's get the machines out and show you how to run the machines. Because this is, this is, they're wonderful. If you don't have a TI, find somebody that does. Sit with them in class. You can always install one of these on your computers at home or in the computer labs. That's the beauty of not having to worry about assessments in class or on your cell phone. There are plenty of places you can install these things. They may have 1984 technology. They might, but they do great statistics for us. They do. Kind of nice. Kind of nice. They were for a lot of things. For a lot of things. Resolution was not one of them, unfortunately. You didn't know any better. I'm not arguing it. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying. All right. It's just an 84, same as yours. Oh no, it's just a plug-in. It's, it's broken off, set of tape off. Nope, nothing, nothing fancy. Okay, today we begin, and you guys may have done this in 105 a couple times. I think I may have had you in these menus before in 105. But I want to make sure we get really good today at getting values into our TIs and getting numbers out of RTIs. The interpretation comes with practice, of course. Uh, you're going to see some more of this on your exam Do in a couple weeks. You're going to see pretty much every day between now and the end of the term. So turn them on. 
We want to get into the stat menu. S T A T. It's got its own button. And it's in the middle column, almost to the top. It's above Pergam and below Dell. Stat. Now, I'm using the TI-84, which is just like a TI-83. If you guys want, you can, you can, like I said, you can get together with somebody else who's got one if you want. You can also just kind of hang back and watch the video later if you want to install it. Yes, please do. Sure. Make friends. Yes, make friends. Yeah, no, remember, the assessments are done out of class. You can install one of these on a computer if you want later. I've got the freebie download. You can do, it doesn't work on an Apple, though. Unfortunately. Oh, you've got your own. Excellent. You see, that's what I love. There's always options. There, say that again. One more time, nice and loud. There are always, always options. Delayed. There are always technology options. I only use this because so many of you brought them with you from your last math class. That's it. There's always ways around these things, though. Many of them free, which is even better. Now, there are three sub menus edit, calculate, and tests. We are not going to go into tests at all in this class. We're going to spend a great deal of our time in edit and a little bit of calc. Let's go to edit first. Press enter to get into it. Here is a series of lists. Mine has some stuff in it. I need to get that out. I will get that out in a second. So does everybody see L1 up here, L2 up here, L3, and so forth? If you arrow over, you'll see a few more, although we'll, we'll never have to use this many. There's six, I believe, all together. Does anybody have stuff in theirs? I've got, a good, I've got stuff in mine as well. This is the way you clear lists. Put your blinker on top of the list's name, so it's highlighted. Now press the clear button. It's got its own button off to the right side. And then press down, boom, gone. Do the same thing for every list that you need. Yep. Clear and down. And do that as long as you can to clear all your lists out. If you press delete, the list will get removed. Does anybody not see like L1 or L2? They just see L3. That happens from time to time. That's an easy fix. If that ever happens, let me know. We can fix that. That's pretty, that's pretty simple. So let's do this. You now have, this is called your stat list editor. This is where you put your data. Let's put Bert, no, Ernie here and Bert here. So put all of Ernie's test scores in, separated by an enter after each one. So he has 79. He had an 80, he had an 81, an 82, and I believe an 83. That's Ernie's. Just press enter after each one. Doesn't matter what order. Very good question, David. Does not matter what order, because it's going to go ahead and resort them anyway. For you. L2 put in uh, Burt's. I'm going to look over my shoulder here. Burt had a 68, 82, 94, 61. And a one hundred. That is the binomial, I believe. Yeah, that's the mean variance in uh, the binomial random. That's a beautiful one. That's another. That's all right. I'm sitting in class going, why, why? The prof wouldn't tell me, so I'm not proving myself. Okay. So that's a that's a different variant. That's a, That's assuming you buy what a standard deviation is. That show you how to use it to a certain type of situation. Okay. It's a formal term. I. I well, it can be first. After 243, it'll be as confusing as work. Yeah. Okay. Now, press the stat button again. Your, your data is in. Your data is in. And stat. Scroll over to calculate, which means just press the right arrow over. Ooh. There's a lot of stuff in this. In 105, we used a bunch of this. This is tight. This is tight. We used a bunch of these. We're only going to use one thing in this class. And it's the very first one, it's called one bar stats. Yeah, it's the one bar stands for single variable. There's only one variable we're analyzing right now. What's the variable we're analyzing right now? Well, that's a that's a one of the ways to measure the variable. What what is the actual variable X st standing for in this? His test scores. A standard deviation is a way of talking about his test score, just like the average is, just like the median is, just like the quartiles will be. But we are only analyzing his test scores. We're not trying to compare his test scores to Bert's test scores. That would be two variables. Just look at Ernie. So one bar stats, press enter. It's going to kick you out to your home screen. I'll fix, I know why I did. We'll fix that in a second. Press enter again. If anybody's screen looks different than mine just did, 
Put your hand up. Let me come around and fix your machine so it does look like mine because this is going to give you an error. I'll fix it for you right now, Scott. It's the stat wizard off. Be gone, friend. So now it looks just like that. Are we getting success? Are we getting these results? Let's talk about what we're looking at. Okay?